Well, with that being said, it's you guys are trying to guess what anime we're streaming. Why don't we say hello to YouTube? Hi, YouTube. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this is one of those surprise moments of an anime where the chat doesn't really know what we're doing. Most people don't know. Why are my glasses so dirty? Nobody really knows what we're doing other than me and, you know, the person that I talked to about doing this. So I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are having a fantastic evening. Yes, I am a psychologist. I would go grab my diploma to show you guys. But last time I did that, I accidentally doxed myself on Twitch. So I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but what I am going to go ahead and do is, you know, mention, hey, if you guys have and want any mental health advice or anything, we literally have a friendly advice hotline that we do on Twitch. Uh, regarding any situation that may be happening in your life, it is completely free. You know, just feel free to come on anytime. There's hundreds of VODs on here of us doing the uh, friendly advice hotline. Um, and yeah, that's the best way I can put it. Damn, all for fucking confessing? Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, now I get you guys' fucking memes about this. Okay, this is a comedy, right? This is gonna be straight up with you guys. Please don't tell me that this entire suggestion time, you know, looks like an anime. It feels like a fucking anime. But knowing you guys, every single fucking suggestion you guys do, it's a fucking depresso show. Not that there's anything with them being a bad or sad show, you know, but... Yeah, it's the best way I can put it. Um... Okay, let's, let's, there, there's a huge concept to go ahead and break down off of it. Yeah, please no spoilers, guys, you know, in any way, shape, or form. So, how many of you guys would actually say that love is actually war? Oh, oh no, QBE is spoiling. Take him out of the comment section. Let's go, guys. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're good, man. But no, like, how many of you guys would actually say, like, and not necessarily, like, well, actually, I'll give you guys two different things. How many would, of you guys would say that the attraction process of trying to, like, uh, I don't know, date the other individual or find what, like, your relationship is with another individual is war or that love itself, you know, like, full-on, uh, I don't know how to put it, not even platonic love, we're talking about, like, full-on, like, intimacy and full love can be war. I, I Pizza, I, I understand that there's, there's this whole concept of a show, it's probably going to revolve around, uh, love and whatnot mating ritual there are mating rituals there's there's, there's different mating rituals for every culture you know love can be a prepared so and this is all culturally based right but even through culture based what you'll find is love is that is free and open and uh flows easy will always be the best kind of love right because it's not something that you're trying to force it's not something that you're trying to like uh you know for example if I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Amzeron or, or Mach Tank, <laughs> Masha Tank, you know, if I'm just like hitting on Masha Tank for whatever reason, right? And Masha Tank was being super duper cold. And then, like, whenever Hughes thought that he was hitting on me, he thought that I was being super fucking cold. You guys know what that is if that were to happen immediately. That's not war. That's literally called miscommunication. <laughs> like, straight up like you know if we're trying to flirt with one another and, and for some reason i'm like damn like i guess he just really doesn't like me or vice versa that that ain't a cold war that's just called poor communication skills you know hey hey you know what my, my should think i don't doubt it man i don't doubt a majority of you guys you know you guys are all super seducers uh 10th level gurus on that but it's just interesting that, like, she's holding knives, he's holding a gun, so it's probably, like, different methods towards their madness, is what I'm guessing. Uh, so I guess we'll find out. I don't know, I'm excited, man. Let's go, let's see how much of a meme this is. Hey, this is fucking sick, dude! Wait. She's the one from the dance you guys want me to do, right? Sorry, don't mean to just fucking stop it randomly in the middle. The, the, yeah, this OP is a banger, by the way. 110% a fucking banger. Um, but yeah, this is, it's Chica, right? Because it's a Chica dance, right? Aww. <laughs> Thanks, Modify. That, that was a good one, man. Alright, just making sure. So now I know that this is a fucking meme-worthy show. 
総資産200兆円1000を超える子会社を抱え四大財閥の一つに数えられる篠宮グループの長女として生を受けた正真正銘の霊場であるその地図の大きを語るがごとく芸事、音楽、武芸、いずれの分野でも華々しい功績を残した紛れもない才女それが篠宮かぐやであるそして You wanna know what the fuck that sounds like, being 100% honest with you? That sounds like fucking a shit ton of pressure being put on someone. Like,、uh, Alan, I'll do the Chica dance when Brady gets his,、uh, his full on cat made outfit. Like, we'll, we'll find a way to do it together. We'll, we'll, we'll plan something out. But no, when, specifically when it comes to,、uh, to her, you know. First off, if you ever come or if you ever have like see people from families that are like distinguished or you know anything like that, like you know, big medical groups or big whatever, you'll always, especially, especially, why, why, why don't we go ahead and throw this out there? If you are from, and I, I, this doesn't just apply to Asians, it also applies to Latinos. You will always have the pressure of your family, like, oh, why aren't you a doctor yet? Why don't you go for your doctorates? Why aren't you doing good in school? You should be going to university. You should be doing this. Like, people are always trying to influence what you can and can't do and why you're not performing at a thousand and fucking ten point standards, like, that are unreasonable for any fucking human being out there, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I did promise to do the Chica dance. That's why I'm saying it. But the, the big point that I, that I am throwing out there is like, if you ever come from any type of family or anything that has high expectations of you, you know, yeah, exactly, Pizza. What you'll often find out is that those expectations are extremely unrealistic. They'll cause a lot of trouble in either social development, you know, especially if. First off, if you're like, I, I hurt, I really do hurt for the individuals that went from high school, like COVID things started, were co like a lot of high school shut down, and then boom, they have to go into university because it's a whole brand new like learning environment aside from like online going back into school, like into that face to face contact. So, that first off, that's another fucking hurdle that you're going to have to overcome. Right. And there's no one that's fucking like guiding you through it to be like, hey, you know what? Like, or, and also you have to process the trauma because this is a fucking trauma that you did not get to go through your fucking like general high school experience of like graduation and shit, you know? Like, a majority of them, and this is fucking blowing my mind now that I'm going into this fucking discussion, right? A majority of high schoolers that were fucking hit for some reason with this whole pandemic shit did not get to experience sort of that like, I, You can call it a milestone, right? Because that's technically what it is like graduating, walking, you know, being with your, even though it's annoying for those of us that have gone through it, like it, it is still considered a milestone. And for some people, it's quite literally like, oh, yeah, I was in school, shit happened, now I'm in university, and it just feels like a fucking blur, you know? And that's, that's quite literally like, you know, taking away all the importance of the steps, the milestones of those steps. And then just fucking smashing it together. That one, if you're like, hey, you know what? I just game all day. Like, you know what? It doesn't really matter to me. You didn't place any importance on it. I'm sure it's an ease of transition, but those that did, those that were like socially、uh, active, that can be a huge fucking point. I'm not sure if any of you guys did go through that, but yeah. Anyway, what, what I'm talking about, like when it comes to expectations and stuff, I wonder how much of that is truly. Because There comes a place where if expectations are placed on you, you stop being who you truly are in order to meet those expectations. So, what ends up happening, especially if you use the sociological imagination and whatnot, is you literally start creating masks. And this is like the number one issue that a lot of people nowadays have, right? They, they have masks on that correspond to different scenarios. Granted, everyone wears masks, don't get me wrong, but these are like perfectly crafted masks that people wear for their family, for the environment, whatnot, and they're scared of showing their true selves because if they do show, show their true selves or true emotions or whatever, guess what? You're now not following the expectations that were placed on you that are probably really fucking toxic and that will probably cause a lot of divide. So, how do you form? Genuine communication, especially when it comes to love and emotions of attachment, like heart attachment. Anyone care to take it? Sorry, guys, if I'm fucking going off, but this is, yeah, this is one of those points where I'm just like, all right, guys, attachment is my shit. I can go on about attachment all day, especially about Bulby and Einsworth, like, you know, all day, any day. But yeah, like for you guys, when, the first time that you guys fell in love, 
what was that like for you and how hard was it to either reach out to the person that come naturally was it a bit of a like i don't know what the fuck to do did you ask for advice what did you guys do not talk to them and watch from a distance oh that was just like oh i don't know what to do no that even for making friends monar it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic attachments it could even be like friend attachments you know I'll be honest, I was fucking terrified. Like, hi, Geeky. Yeah, how did this happen? We're, we're talking about uh, attachment and love, man. Uh, you know, that big fucking kokoro feeling or whatever the fuck, however the fuck you say it, you know. But yeah, man, that's the best way I can put it. It was, it was a unique experience because I remember, you know, it was sort of like, huh? I like you, but more than a friend. Like, you're you're genuinely interesting. Oh, shit, what the fuck do I do now? I, I don't know what the fuck to do, you know? Emzeron, there are a couple different reasons. First off, you have to, like, find out, for example, what does love mean to you? Because a lot of people, by the way, there's different forms of love inside of romantic love, right? For example, you can find a romantic homebody love, which is literally falling in love with somebody that, like, makes you feel like home and whatever home is to you, right? Which sounds fucking weird, but it goes both ways, right? Because you often hear this. It's like, hey, you know what? When I'm with you, I feel like I can be myself. I feel like, like, you know, like it's home. Like I'm comfortable enough to be here and not stress the fuck out, so on and so forth, you know? Or another another way it could be like, hey, you know what? People can have uh, sexual, uh, just sexual love, quite literally, where it's like, you ever hear the phrase, oh, yeah, no, we had sex, but it was emotionless sex. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know what? Like, you know, they're like, we're fuck buddies. But at the end of the day, like, they don't want to break it off, even though there's, like, an actual relationship happening, because there is that attachment of sex that is placed there. Granted, it can be placed on the emotions of fear and being left behind and breaking attachments, and you can even go into, like, the whole, huh, maybe she's, an or they're anxiously attached. Maybe they're having issues with this and that, you know? But there is many different forms of love inside of that love is a feeling that like you know you, you've maybe have found a partner that you're comfortable with uh but you can also define it as sexual love you can define it as even friendship like a true fucking like you know a friend that you don't mind having around you that's why you have different uh ways of sexuality right because there's some people that are not sexually attracted to their partner but yet they love the empathy and communication aspects of having a partner right of feeling like that's home and that's sort of how you're able to define the different sexualities and different styles of love inside of what love can be and that's 110 percent okay that's why i say hey guys figure out what you love figure out what your likes and dislikes are figure out your kinks figure out uh your style of love because that's super important but anyway let me read it let me read ahead i wasn't even aware that i was in love oh <laughs> pizza <laughs> And think about it, I was interested in a girl when I was around 10. And put on one of their own. Oh, she kept the ring? Oh, Maka Tank, we're, we're, we gotta go over there and uh, uh, we, we, we gotta go get your ring back, brother. <laughs> Woof. True. I mean, that, but that's a natural thing. That's called propinquity. And it's like trying to get the, your attachment a little bit closer so that, that way you're able to uh experience that sharedness that connection uh that's also that by the way that's also one of the key ways as to how cheating can happen if you guys are ever wondering like why did my partner cheat on me and this is even on me and i recognize this shit as well which is quite literally like sometimes when communication lines start breaking down in some way shape or form uh and you might be busy you might be doing whatever the fuck is happening in your life but your partner has um Let's say uh, I'll use theater, right? Say that they're in a theater company and a theater group. They have rehearsals every single day and they're hanging out a lot around particular people unknowingly, you know, and this is, this is a thing. This is why you start getting attached to people that you work with that are around the same age or whatever. You start to form bonds, right? Now, if people overstep on that bond, of course, that's, that's, that's not okay. That's cheating. So on and so forth. You can classify it. If you guys haven't talked about it in your relationship, that's something that you guys should definitely talk about at the very beginning. Like, you know, are we an open or closed relationship? 101 things. But when we're talking about specifically like propinquity, yeah, dude, the longer that you spend with people, the more attached that you get with them, you know? So that's the best way I can put it.
Do asexual people actually exist? Uh, there's a difference between asexual and aromantic, and yes, pizza picante, they they do exist. Asexual, like asexuality and aromanticism, is definitely a big concept inside of you know just people. Sometimes it's not even like having a romantic aspect for individuals uh, to because you can be aromantic but yet be asexual. So you're not looking for any type of romance, and I'm sure that like people in the comments can go ahead and clarify for me. Like this is again, this is coming from the sexology aspects of various classes that we've had uh brady and i and 101 things but yet you know you're not be romantically attracted to someone but yet still desire sex and also just because you're asexual doesn't mean that you don't want sex you know it just means that you're you know you can pick and choose you're very limited and it's also so, sort of with demisexuality like you know but this is what i'm saying guys uh, i know that sometimes there's people that try and like shit quite literally like they try and like go hard as to like why are there so many sexualities but yet when you start to think about the different ways that you love you start to find out that there's different ways in which sex takes a big aspect into them for example are you really attracted to individuals that are highly intelligent and are empathetic before you get into the sexual aspect or are you just having sexual like sex you know sex with everyone and anything you don't really fucking mind um is sex for you something that like you're kind of restrained on because of say trauma so on and so forth you can find what sex means to you and find out what that specific category is for you you know that's the best way i can put it Yeah, a a exactly. But that's what I'm saying, Masters, that there's a difference between aromantic and asexual, you know. Uh, Magister, okay, it's going to be a serious question that will sound funny for some people, but why does love always fade? Uh, because people stop communicating. People stop dating their partner. If you want me to be 100% honest with you, we get way too comfortable with our partner once we're... Oh, my voice cracked, guys! <laughs> we get way too comfortable with our partner that quite literally what ends up happening is we stop dating them like people get into full on like you know have having kids and everything and yet they forget that their partner is an integral part of like a relationship it's not just because say like uh, say i have a wife right she has kids yeah she's not just the mom of the kids she's also the partner that i chose and that i should continuously keep dating you know I should keep being like, hey, you know what? Let's go out date nights. Let's keep the communication lines open. Just because you're stressed out does not mean you should close down. And that is 110% why uh, love starts to fade and you start to get a lot of things. Granted, that's also like, you know, if you're having issues of communication, you're having issues of inspiration, it might be something worth talking about. And that's the number one thing. The voice cracked with the body language. He is connected. <laughs> Y'all are fucking wild, guys. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. That was a fucking Cold War analysis and shit. Hey. Y'all ever heard of shit testing? And this is for both guys and girls and shit like that. And yes, geek me, this is actually kind of fucking funny. Like, anything attachment-wise, I'll, I'll instantly get into and find a little bit fucking hilarious. But any of you guys know what shit testing is? I'm sure one of us or many of you guys at some point in your life have been shit tested by a friend, by whatever, or which is, and it's not gaslighting, there's a big difference, which is quite literally bringing up um, presupposed terms in order to find out what you're thinking without necessarily giving you the answers to them so sometimes that can be like oh you're too tall that's a shit test because now i want you to validate my my answer you know or my personality is shit testing but no 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 no. this is aside from the weird because i know that there's a lot of fucking weird ass like uh, i don't know how to put it like fake individuals that are like we are socially designed this to work with this it's all fucking bullshit unless you're a fucking social psychologist you've taken your studies you know know that like there's a difference right yeah exactly shit testing deserves the same because it's shit and it's not not only in a romantic sense it can quite literally be through a friendship aspect as well 
Yes, Punish. It is quite literally giving people uh, either a shit response, you know, for example, if Kratos was here, it's like, why are you too tall? Well, like, you know, if we're brother, like meaning to be friends or whatever, why are you too tall? Like, what the fuck? You know, like, uh, he's like trying to approach to say, hey, you know what? Like, well, I guess we're working on a project together. And I say that, and that's literally me shit testing him to see how he'll respond back. If he takes it and like cries off and he's like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm too tall. Then like, you know, it's a shit test. Cause I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, dude. But if he's like, why are you too short? Or he responds something else. Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. Like all of a sudden you have validated or you've redirected the shit test, right? So why am I saying this? Uh, no, no, crazy. You're, 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 you know, you're a perfectly handsome individual. I give you props all the time. I'm just using you as an example, brother. But a, yeah, yeah, it's passive aggressiveness that is to elicit a response, any type of emotional response. Um, and specifically with this, you know, when when someone's like, hey, do you know that they're talking about us? They're saying that we're dating. You know how many times, you know what works best in order to like poke back? If that is literally the stigma or the social belief that like society is having, Magister, because that's just how society works. It's how a lot of people will do that in order to try and see if your justification is true. If you're just there and you're giving up immediately after being shit tested instead of taking it and being like, I don't know, like, why are you so fucking short or something like that? You're showing that you can't take a joke in terms of like their own social construct that they've created inside of themselves, which is often what leads to like a I'm not sure if you've ever seen it. It's not even in clubs and whatnot, but it's quite literally in any social interaction in school and stuff like that. When someone tries to come into a group and there's an immediate shit test, they don't pass whatever the shit test is, like they'll leave 110%. And it sounds fucking cruel, but this is a weird social construct that a lot of intergroups have that doesn't have to be a direct shit test. It can quite literally be like a little passive remark that like it's just to see how you react, which is the whole point of it, you know? But anyway, aside from that, what I was going at, if someone tells you, you know, if someone were to tell me and Brady, and I'm using Brady as an example, I love using Brady as an example as well. Hey, did you know that like everyone in the psychiatrist community thinks that you guys are dating? You know, if Brady was like that, I'd be like, why don't we tell them that we are? Let's see their fucking reaction. Fuck it, dude. You know, in a very chilled manner, guess what? All of a sudden, this weird negative thing has now turned into a fucking joke. And has now enabled an easier space rather than like trying to play it off cool like nah man whatever man like it, it, it is what it is people will think that you know but anyway because if you think about it, it it is a good it's a really good reaction for that uh yeah waiting for nickel brady and maydead <laughs> Oof, we'll keep waiting brother anyway oh no Why do I feel like both of them would fucking break the moment one of them's like, hey, you want to go out? <laughs> oh, fucking blush. Weird ass emotions and everything, you know? And that's uh, the best way I can put it. Like, they seem so fragile with their mask. Like, if I saw this as a counselor or whatnot, I'd fucking call, I'd be one, I'd be one of those professors that would be like, yo, um, so y'all got feelings for each other? What's up? Or like, I'd put them and do, make them do fucking projects together for that fucking reason, dude. Just to be like, all right, propinquity, let's see if it works, you know? Like, without fucking calling them out, you don't want to fucking cause weird-ass tension, you know? But you could do it in, like, this cool, suave way where it's like, hey, it's uh, project time, you guys are together. Um, we'll work on your shit, you know, work on communication and whatnot. <laughs> but... I wonder why they have this duality. I wonder what the importance, you know, because clearly they're both like, well, I mean, if he did it, if she did it, you know, I would just have to. I mean, where does this need for keeping a mask? Oh, I, I'm sure, brother. I'm sh even with like uh, my kids and uh, don't tell me. Don't, don't, let, let, let me go back. Guys, don't don't tell me my shorts, kids. Just please don't. If I see if I see a little kindling in there, you know, I'll make them like sparring partners for a little bit. You know, I'll be like, hey, you guys team up, you know, fight each other, you know, explore yourselves, so on and so forth. <laughs> like, yo, it stays between us. But it's really good, dude. It's really good to go ahead and like not call people out, not fucking um, I don't know how to put it. Like, quite literally 
force them to announce your shit, but be like, hey, team up, guys. It's you two on a fucking project, you know? Fuck. Half a year? I guess this is where culture plays such a huge fucking role, dude. If half a year passed, bruh, bruh, okay, let's be real. If fucking half a year passes, if half a year, what, why are you saying it? no freaking way, AC? If half a year passes, and I have the fucking stud of a man that is Kraith, you know, right next to me, and like we're working together, and I haven't been like, yo, Kraith, what up? You wanna go watch a movie or some shit? I, I guess this is where cultural sensitivities have to be so important, you know? Imagine, sir. No, no, no. It's only my martial arts kids. It's no one else, you know? But that's that's the whole purpose. It's like, you can't necessarily... Bro, because here's the thing. Feelings can change in that amount of time, right? Which is why there's always that saying, like, if you don't take a shot, or any shot that you don't take, it's a shot not taken. You know, you got to take every shot you can. You got to learn how to be rejected. Being rejected is perfectly fine. I would suggest it to all of you. A A Z, A Z, I love you, man. <laughs> I'm hitting on everyone, Masha Tang. Fuck it. But that's that's the overall thing. It's like a lot of people fear rejection, right? Straight up. How many of you guys would fear being rejected by a girl if you guys went up to them more like, yo, what up? Like, you know, hey, can I get your number? Can I get your Snapchat? Can I get your Instagram or boy or whatever you're into? You know, whatever individual you're into. How many of you guys would fear being rejected? All of a sudden, the chat goes quiet. <laughs> uh, but nowadays, not so much, exactly. Depends if I know her. Because uh, rejection sucks. It, that's, that's the best way to put it, you know? Oof. Oof. Geek me. I'm sorry, my friend. But yes, being rejected fucking sucks, dude. It hurts. Fucking hurts. I'm not gonna lie to you, especially the first couple of times. And it's a scary experience because it's being vulnerable, you know? But the overall purpose of that is quite literally like at least you're able to fucking move on from there, you know? Because like if someone's hey, you know what, like I'm just not into you, whatever, you can be like, it hurts, but hey, at least respect the honesty of it and be able to move on, you know. And also you should never reject yourself. That's 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 a bit rough. But yeah, dude, because if you shoot your shot and they're like, yeah, or like, even if you guys are having like really good friendship, here's, here's where lines get fucking blurry and you guys have to be careful. And this is, this is pretty much it. If you don't make like, you know, especially with anyone, anyone in particular, this is anyone knowledge. If you do not shoot your shot and it goes into a friendship and like lines start getting blurried at this point, it will hurt 10 times more because you can start making assumptions as to where your relationship is going, but yet still not clarify what you want out of this relationship, friendship type thing. So even if you start getting affectionate with someone and they're like, you know, flirting back with you or whatever, and you're like, hey, you know, why don't we go out? Or you start like getting way too ahead of the individual and you're like, yo, why don't we meet your parents or some fucking weird shit like that? And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're just friends. Boom. That's gonna fucking hurt, dude. That hurts so fucking much because all of a sudden, the friendship that you thought was developing into something else, and like, even though there was flirtation and random shit happening, there's a giant fucking wall in the middle, gentlemen. There's a giant fucking wall in the middle. You just gotta fucking hold on because this fucking wall is collapsing. Yeah, you get hit like a fucking truck coon trying to isekai you to another world. That's the best way I can put it. And that's why you gotta be fucking clear since the beginning. Like, you're like, even even if you start like noticing inside of your friendship, you do start getting front like feelings. Yeah, it hurts like junk food. If you start noticing inside of your friendship that you do start developing feelings, that's when you're like, hey, you know what? You uh, whenever you feel like it, but please don't take forever on it. Be like, hey, I'm actually like, you know, you want to go out, not as friends. Could be something as simple as that, you know, or do you know, so on and so forth. Do not give ultimatums. That is the next big thing, guys. Especially if you value your friendship, if you genuinely value your friendship and you just want to see it grow. Don't put like we either go out or we're no longer together as friends anymore. You know, like none of that stupid bullshit. Love should be free and open. Uh, you know, for both parties, it is not a fucking weird like tactical thing. You know, because I feel not, bro. It, it hurts. That's the best way I can put it. I think. Uh, at one point in your life, y'all will experience something. 
But love, in fact, is not war. Love, in fact, is a series of communication and miscommunication. <laughs> but dude fuck dude fuck oh shit bro get fucking checked oh you know who the real person check you know what you know who the fucking 5d player in this is chica dude there's a fucking 5D player in this shit, dude. What the fuck? Now that I'm thinking about it, what the fuck? Dude! <laughs> she seems so, like, airheaded as a character, but now that I think about it, it's, like, proportionally made. Yeah, Chica is a DM in this fucking, like, group. Holy shit, dude. Like, she, like, you know, seeing the relationship dynamics, you know, and then... Yeah, she's the, that's scary, brother. That is so fucking scary. <laughs> Best way to put it. Holy shit, dude. She's like, she saw that dynamic. She's like, you know what? I'm going to be like evil Ed. I'm going to fucking be like, oh, I have two extra tickets if you guys want them. You know, whatever, guys. Hey, there's a fucking rumor that like, if you guys go to this movie, you'll become a couple or some shit. You know? Like, damn, dude. Chica, if, if we're going to talk about social like intelligence, that is a really, like, you know, socially intelligent move. I see what you mean. They're like, they're like competing against each other for the other's affection, almost. See, do you think that this would lead to toxicity? I think so, brother. I think that this could... could fucking rudely, dude. You right? <laughs> if, if a girl was like... like up to a fucking mess, like... <laughs> <laughs> bro how many toxic girls were there that like try to do this shit i know i know quite a few that will quite literally like try and get you into like this weird state of playing games with you like yes no uh you know you got to make the first move and shit like that right like because there's a line between being playful and and trying to manipulate the other person right and, and that's exactly where this it's funny seeing this because like even though it's like over dramatized like i get a potato chip and eat it and he's true yeah wait wait i, I can do this in real life man i have fucking chips here i grab a potato chip uh, and eat it right stupid shit like that i was just watching death note earlier today but what i was getting at is like even though they're over dramatizing the process it's still fucking funny to see because like people do pick up on weird fucking attachments and weird like uh flirting behavior or like courting behavior yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna break out some deep psychological terminology here sure so do you know what a parataxic distortion is uh explain it to us brother so parataxic distortion it's, it's this is like something that happens between people who have uh, d uh, like difficult relationships. Mm -hmm. So if I have a like, it's basically ha like having an idea about someone that like represents your idea about them, but isn't accurate. I I'm not going to be able to explain this. I'll, I'll I'll look up the definition so I don't get this wrong, but. What I'm seeing in this show is is parataxic distortion. So, mm. let's see. It describes the inclination to skew perceptions of others based on fantasy. The distortion is a faulty perception of others based not on actual experience with the other individual, but on a projected fantasy personality attributed to the individual. For example, when one falls in love, an image of another person as the perfect match or soulmate can be created when in reality, the other person may not live up to these expectations or embody the imagined traits at all. So, so what it is essentially talking about is like having, you know, I have this idea about someone who is the perfect match for me. Right. And if I start seeing even small signs of that in someone else, I might like kind of create this distortion, this parataxic distortion about them. Or I might start pushing their personality to fit it.
Well, and this is something that can lead to like toxic relationships. And, and that's what this looks like. That, that's exactly what I was going to say, Craig. You hit it right in the head. I've used a layman's term for the longest times. So I know we learned it like at some point in the class, right? But I've quite literally always used the layman's terms. Pedestals, dude. Quite literally like forming a whole fucking pedestal and then shoving people into Bro, you just fucking blew my mind with that fucking word again. You brought me back to being in class. <laughs> that's fucking great dude i was breaking out the deep psychological lore yeah you're bringing out some some like the deep terminology <laughs> not like the best academic psychologist but every once in a while i get one I get right one. yeah yeah you you fucking hit it right on the head but yeah that's exactly what i'm saying here it's like a weird uh pedestal work with framing you know like quite literally trying to frame this is where like the whole like submission aspect that i'm seeing comes from like oh if brady and i were in this weird fucking game right and i'm trying to get brady to ask me out or whatever i'm literally trying to get him to submit to like my will so that the framing can, is already there but what i'm wondering yeah, it, it's similar to like transference in a way. right transference right. is like is like when uh, in the therapeutic environment, right? Like, let's say I have a female therapist and I, I in the therapeutic environment, I'm transferring uh, my my feelings and behaviors like almost onto the therapist, which reflect either, you know, some kind of relationship in my life. Maybe it's a troubled relationship with a teacher. Maybe it's a girlfriend. Maybe it's my mother or something. But the original idea of transference was talking specifically about what the client has with a therapist right there's also reverse transference and reverse reverse transference but but like a, as a basic concept it can also happen just between two people where you know i'm transferring an expectation or i'm behaving in a way uh, that represents a different relationship i have with someone who doesn't actually fill that role and right well, yeah, this dude, is, you brought me on. I didn't know we were going to get this academic. Uh, bro, wait, yeah, if, I'm telling you, there are some anime that just fucking hit, dude. Like, you're watching it and you're just like, this is like so many concepts that we can go on, you know? Like, fuck, dude. Um, yeah. But, like, one, one thing that I'm interested in that I keep seeing is the self talk and mass that they have on, right? So, I'm wondering if this is like, I'll, I'll let it play a little bit longer just to see if we can get anything further from it. But, like, this is something that I would call out just seeing the relationship because I keep hearing like weird self talk mixed in by like wearing different masks, like to who they're talking to. So, yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing I'll say like, you also see parataxic distortion a lot with like politics, right? Like, all right. It's essentially like when people say you're setting up a straw man, it's like, you know, if I'm on the left side of the political spectrum, I have like a very demonized view of the other side. And like, I'm going to end up seeing people fit that role, even if they don't completely. Right. And then I end up embodying a parataxic distortion from their side as well. Yeah. So that's that's another example of it, but it's it's really more formulated actually. Hey, I know that girl. I, that's from the gift, the gift the, where she's the dancing. chica dance. Yeah. So we got to do it, brother. Once you get your neko outfit, your neko maid outfit, your cat maid outfit, and I get my maid outfit on, we got to do it, brother. We got to learn to dance and everything. Bugging out. <laughs> Bro, okay, but there are a lot of people that do the fucking puppy dog eyes, like guys and girls included. Like they know the exact moment that like uh, to fucking lay it on people. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, so like that's a manipulation tactic, brother. Especially if it's not coming out naturally and you're doing it like for the purpose of not giving someone satisfaction of uh, I don't know, you conceding to something. That is straight up manipulation. Yeah, man. Like, if 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 your partner did this to you, wouldn't you be like, at first, your heart might be like, "Fuck, I guess I got to do this," right? But then after a while, you'd be like, "What the fuck? Why are you doing this again?" Like, yeah, I mean, when you uh, get involved with someone, right? Like, I think we've mentioned or talked about love languages as a concept on here before, right? Um, but uh, but there are certain things that you kind of like you pick up about that person and they pick up about you, you know, uh, there are certain habits, patterns, behavioral ticks that you both recognize in each other and almost, yeah, like try to outmaneuver where it's like, have you ever, you know, had your partner where you're like, Oh, I, 
I have to ask them for this thing or I have to ask them to do this thing for me and I already know how that's going to go. So I have to adjust my strategy for it where I'm like thinking about how I want to present it and like that overthinking is almost what causes the problem mm -hmm. in the end. You know, where it's like you're trying to outwit your partner before you've even introduced a problem. Right. And then it comes back to like what I said previously uh, in another stream about like seeing it as a you versus your partner problem rather than you and your partner versus some problem together. And it does, it does you know, th that's what's something that happens in, a, in an ongoing relationship. But it's also something that's happening like in, in the origin of a relationship. Because before I really know this girl or this guy, right, like, I'm almost trying to outwit my idea of what they're like, my, my parataxic distortion. Because I don't, I don't, I haven't spent years with them. I don't know how they're going to react to a very forward question. Access my knowledge of like, well, here's what people have, you know, done before, or here's my idea of what, you know, a very bookish girl might respond to, you know, a... Uh, asking her to go to a sporting event or something like you already have a prepackaged idea of how she's going to respond so you are trying to also kind of outwit them and and off of that i'd like to add like it's the best way that i can put it is when we're talking about like forming relationships and whatnot we're actually talking about it in the frame of healthy relationships right because the majority and i hate to throw this out there a majority of high school and like you know college relationships even university relationships will end up in failure because you haven't reached the maturity level of understanding and whatnot of what's to come like a lot of us like we fall in love and that happens to me too brother so many times like i had a high school sweetheart and everything and yeah dude of course it's not gonna fucking you're just like all of your relationships are going to fail <laughs> well, no, not all of them, but but you know what I'm talking about. It's like a majority of them because people grow, and especially during that growing period, like going to different universities, meeting new people, finding your place in them. Like you start to grow into different. Unless you're extremely healthy, you can communicate. You're mature. You have like 101 things going for you. Otherwise, the majority of the time, it is going to end up in this like growing, growing pains. Rather well said. Yeah, no, I do agree with that. Yeah. All right, let's continue, man, because oh, we got a huge chunk to... I know, it, things get tricky when we react <laughs> together, because we have so much to say, we never get to... I'm fucking ham in this show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to point I out... I love it, actually. It's so over-the-top, like, <laughs> about something... Like, they're using all the stylized, like, anime fight scene tricks, like, in the editing and in the... You know, the moving backgrounds and stuff for just like very mundane things. You, you know why I was laughing specifically? Like, well, two two reasons. One, Chika, the the girl with the pink hair, was the one that introduced the problem to them. I'm like, oh, I have these tickets. You guys should go, right? Two, yeah. that, that that sort of, like that whole like reaching for the steam button reminded me of you fucking reaching for the key ball with your friends. The story you fucking told us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking chaos theory, man. You fucking chipping people out. But and the one person who like just doesn't give a shit about it. Right? <laughs> is the one who ends up with it. Oh, that's great, man. Alright, let's continue until we have like more more context here. <laughs> this show like took the, the potato chip eating scene <laughs> and was just like that's the style we want our whole show to be. Like, crazy overhyped stuff for, like, every mundane action. I'm here for it. This, this, is, this is fucking fun, dude. See, but then this brings up the principle of every shot you don't take is a shot not taken. Like, you can't complain if somebody else comes and throws their shot, you know? You miss 100% of the shots you don't pick. <laughs> yes! <laughs> exactly, dude. Like, you know, if, if you're shooting your game, hey, you know what? You at least threw your shot. But if somebody comes around, they throw their shot before you. Hey, you had a fucking waiting game. You waited months. Like, you know, you were... Uh, you, you took forever. Yeah, yeah. Shoot your shot. That's common language that I've heard Ed say, like, many, many times. <laughs> In the bar. 
Yeah, in the bar, in the club. Yes, even a psychologist, we talk in layman's terms. We're not like, oh, well, you should use the attachment theory based on, like, you know, her anxious response or some fucking bullshit like that. No, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't whip out, I don't whip out the parataxic distortions on my first date. <laughs> but he bust out his dance moves on the first date. Uh. See, this self-talk, though, like self-imagination. Yeah, this is interesting. She's got a um, multi-level uh, self-concept. Right. Oh, he does of her, you know? Oh, come on, bro. Could you imagine if the student council president was like, Hey, yo, I'm sorry, you can't fucking date. What are you, I can't elicit, you know, going on a opposite gender fucking extravaganza shit. Yeah, uh, I, I don't get that one. <laughs> I think that's just Why a cool that any damage, like just because he's switching to his official. Uh, all, of, all of a sudden, when it's convenient for him, you know, when he doesn't want to fucking see now, this is what, what is making me wonder what his fucking attachment style is, because clearly he hasn't made a move. And clearly, well, he he's, what he's doing is he's using an appeal to authority. Right. Right. You know, you have, you have appeals to ethics, you have an appeal to emotion, and you have an appeal to authority. And then he's using the appeal to authority in, in philosophical terms. Right. But, but what, what I was hitting at is like, it's clear that he. As Plato would say. He, as Plato would say. <laughs> but what, what, what specifically I'm saying about it is like, he hasn't made his move, but yet he doesn't want to allow others to make their move. And he's even willing to resort to use the authority for it. Yeah, so it's it's like, what, what's he waiting for? What, what? Why is he waiting to ask her out? Because apparently both of them want the other one to confess first. Apparently that's, the, that's sort of what I'm getting from this. See, that's why I think that this is already a really fucking toxic situation. And then, like, being in the room with this, I'd just be like, yo, fucking get it done and over with, you know? Yeah, you know, you have to wonder, like, is the third character, uh, Chica, like, what kind of role is she playing? Is she a moderator of this whole thing? Or is she just inhibiting the toxic, like, relationship? Or is she ignorant of the whole thing? Oh, uh, considering that she pulled out two tickets to a love movie or like a special kind of movie, I think that she knows she might be socially intelligent. She's like a chaos person. Oh, we're in the white void now. I know. Oh. Oh, what a fucking asshole, dude. Way to fucking. What did he ask her? He's like, for my sake, would you be able to forget about this boy? And like, he like let like was actually vulnerable for a second. And she's like, yeah, I guess you know, like I could totally do that. Then he's like, huh, that's something about like you know, essentially like egging it on, like you know, like switching, putting the mask back on instantly. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Oh yeah, that's that's a fucking power play. Yeah, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> it's sinister. Bro, just kiss. Just kiss, man. You fucking go in there, yeah. ask her out, fucking hey, I'm uncomfortable Stop with you. Part of this runaround and just like just go for it. We saw we, we, we learn we learn from Super Seducer. Just kiss, don't ask permission, don't ask for consent. <laughs> we're their independence. We <laughs> 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 a strawberry test. Uh. <laughs> Oh, all right, Brady. I think we solved Love is War. Well, first episode, the psychologists stop solve it. It's all communication issues. They just need to fucking take their shot, you know? Oh, anyway. Okay, but to be fair, if I saw you in a room, right, with someone that, like, you guys have been flirting, and you get this weird ass love letter, and you're like, "Hey, yo, I gotta go check that out." I would probably do what Chica just did, and just be like, "Bro, but I love you, bro. What, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going your place, bro. You stay here. Don't even worry about it, man. Like, fuck, do, do whatever you gotta do. Chill with this girl. I'll, I'll go talk to this other person. No, no, don't even worry. Don't even fret. You know, that's a mastermind fucking yeah, I, behavior. I don't, need 
I don't need a written declaration of love. Right. Yeah, pure affection. That's 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 a, that's a manipulative tactic to sway someone with your sweet words. <laughs> Chica the cock block. I mean, <laughs> I, I think that she just wants to like press the situation to like the two here. Like, yo, act on each other. That's why she stopped it because makes sense. Like as a mediator, yeah, kind she's, of. She, she's she's the chaos element. She's trying to like, you know. She initiates the chaos, but then she, while when when the chaos passes to the other two people, she like negates it and brings it back down to like reality. All right, bro, let's finish this off. Uh, this is a uh, another a term we can put out here called uh, reaction formation. Oh, tell us a little bit more about that, Brady, for those that don't know. Reaction formation is intensely displaying an emotion that is the opposite of what you feel right so it, it's the classic like being mean to the girl you like you know here here the the girl with the uh lovely red uh hair hair bow um is displaying a reaction formation because she is you know insulting and decrying the debaseness mm -hmm. of uh showing uh affection in public while she secretly and suppressedly desires such public debasement. Right. But, like, I guess, first off, here's some hidden lore for Brady. For I know, for those of you guys that are watching this later on YouTube, you guys are getting some fucking lore bits. You guys are like, I came here for a Love is Lore episode, I'm getting fucking lore. But for a long time, Brady... He used to have a red bandana that he would wear all the fucking time. He would be his ping pong bandana. It would be his going out to the club bandana. It would be his, like, I'm a fucking game. I'm a fucking stud, you know, in the Netherlands bandana. It was the shit, dude. I fucking love that bandana. <laughs> dude, I, I fucking forgot about that. I had a bandana phase. That was cool. That was really cool, dude. You had a full-on bandana. And the mysterious phase for all the girls in the fucking thing was like, went from here to a fucking 12, dude. You were at a 10 for Mysterious Guy, and then you turned into a fucking 12 for everyone. I had a certain, I think I was wearing it because it was like, I had hair that wasn't long enough to tie up, but it mm -hmm. wasn't short enough to just like, you know, it wasn't like this, like it is now, to just sort of part. So I had like, yeah, I started putting bandanas on. I don't know why. I forget why. It was probably because we were like going out dancing and shit, and we would get really sweaty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like to hold my hair back or something, and just turned into a style. And yeah, dude, I wore that shit everywhere. I was wearing it in class. It was my going out bandana. It was my chilling bandana. Like, I had different colors. It was cool. <laughs> what fucking over the top shit, dude? <laughs> Yeah, dude, I've never had this kind of reaction to something obvious. <laughs> She's taking food from her, uh, the object of her affection. <laughs> you know what she reminds me of? You know what she reminds me of? You remember when we... Like, you remember when you hurt your ribs uh, after we had our sparring fight? And for the yes. longest for the longest time, I would have a death stare down, like you know, fucking oh, eyes yeah. eyes drilling in the back of my head, like. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just say my partner at the time was extremely angry at Ed for for physically impairing me, <laughs> which left with which left me unable to. Uh, do certain things <laughs> because my ribs my my fucking ribs and spine like had gotten the shit kicked out of them <laughs> so ed was getting the death stare for at least a month at least you know yeah it, it, until, until you recovered yeah <laughs> that's how i was like instantly i saw that and i was like yo maybe i am chica bro <laughs> fuck i <laughs> An indirect kiss. Apparently, drinking from someone else's water bottle is an indirect kiss to Japanese culture. Oh, 
Fuck, is that your depiction of a man? Fuck. Yeah, this is getting crazy, dude. Her, <laughs> her, her, her desire is is to like totally emasculate him, basically. Right. Which is interesting because, like, you know, her desire for him is based on presumably his masculinity, right? Right. But but at the same time, like, she cares. Her 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 like winning points is like you know more important than the attraction level at this point right but that's why i'm like dude what the fuck like if this is your like quite literally your perception of what some, someone that you're attracted to is like why are you stooping to that perception you know oh get denied no one even gives a shit yeah no one gives a shit <laughs> Get right. Get right. <laughs> I'm <barely. laughs> Just like Hollinger's uh, bully, a high school <laughs> anime character. Or Chica getting caught in the middle of this. Accidentally overstepping, bro. Like, hey, yo, can you make me, like, you know how we used to make each other food and shit? Sure, yeah. It, Mostly you making yeah, you, you are a fantastic sous chef. No one's ever gonna fucking throw you down for that. You were wonderful. <laughs> Chica is great. I like her. Yeah, Chica's fantastic. Great positive force of energy. Get yourself someone like Chica, please. Oh yeah, now the apologies. You're definitely a human being. <laughs> <laughs> why is it undignified if you just ask them out is that like a maybe that's a japanese thing she comes from like a super duper rich family so maybe it's that like you know going against family wishes type thing i don't know dude that's i i, I don't get that aspect either but that might just be a cultural thing that we're not picking up on you know so how do two people get together if if no one is forward about it. That's if a good neither question. Person, if, if neither person, like, if, 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 like, you know, not being together is, is more important than your dignity or, like, your, you know, your, your being forward with the fact that you're into them, it's like, how right. does anyone end up together? I, I assume that, like, it's literally like a big mesh from what friendship is to what, uh, relationship is. And throwing this out there, if, as adults, if you meet someone like this, right? If this was like an adult case situation, I gotta be honest That's with you. The I... part, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably also because they're in like what high school or whatever. They're in high school, I mean, yeah. This is, how, like, this is how kids think about things, you know? They'll they'll create an obstacle that they can't overcome and use that as the excuse why they can't just suck it up and do the thing. Right. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. But what I was gonna say is like, can you imagine if like especially like their behavior right now as it is as adult stating how boring like because like they're like oh dignity and whatnot how boring their sex life would be a hundred and ten percent you wouldn't be able to do fucking anything because all of a sudden dignity comes into the question and sex should be funny you should be laughable you should have stupid ass moments in there you know you should just you know it's a sure. time of vulnerability vulnerability like true vulnerability and keeping that up yeah. is rough if they can't even initiate a relationship because of dignity, I can't imagine making any progress in a relationship, especially sexually, if, right. if they're constantly waiting for the other person to, like, you know, lower their inhibitions first. It's like, man, it's going to be the most drawn out, placid sex life in history. <laughs> All right, brother, let's finish this. We're almost there. I see that it's like 20 seconds away. Yeah, bro. So, what'd you think? Oh, chica, pobrecita. <laughs> <laughs> right, having to suffer through their inability to communicate. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad for her. I feel really bad for her as well. Overall, though, I like the anime style. I like like the uh, over the topness of everything. You know, it's like it's like that scene from Death Note, just drawn out to an entire series and. <laughs> 
I love that scene. <laughs> Yeah, the best way I can put it, guys, if you guys are having issues in your relationships or you guys are having anything that's happening uh, and you guys need advice, come join us on Twitch. This is where you guys can literally get Brady and my responses to anything. Know that we love you. We appreciate all of you guys on YouTube. Practice some self-care. No, none of the videos are monetized. And yes, we are psychologists. We are actually colleagues. We graduated at the same fucking class, same time, pretty much everything. Um Best friend, what can I say? You know, he knows everything that I don't, and vice versa. Um, so That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So if you guys are ever wondering, like, and yes, we have doxed herself, or I dox myself on Twitch. So yeah, we we are real psychologists. We just like to keep it casual and involve culture. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in the next episode. For those of you guys here on Twitch, you down for some friendly hotline advice or some destiny? What are you up for, man?